Well, they've always been a you know spread team. Uh, I've known Coach Pinkle and that staff for a long time. I was at Ohio University when, when probably 90% of their staff was all together at Toledo. Uh, they've always been a run-based offense and play action pass after it. Um, at Toledo, they were more of a multiple tight end to do it. Here uh, at, at Missouri, they've gone to a spread. Uh, and with the, the quarterback now with Franklin, he's much more of a running threat than Gabbert was a year ago. So they're used, you know, they're taking advantage of what he's very strong at. And uh, uh, I think they're, you know, one of these unusual, not unusual, but they're a different style of spread team uh, than a lot of the teams in our league where they're spreading out to run it. They're the number one running team uh, in the Big 12. I think they're the 12th or so uh, overall in the country. They're running for about 240 yards a game and throwing for another 250, whatever. So uh, definitely stresses your defense because you got to be able to defend both. Well, last year, didn't they motion they line their running back up as like a wide receiver the, motion? Kind yeah, of they, they do a bunch of that. They're going to be a lot of empty sets mm -hmm. uh, with the running back in there. They'll go to empty where, where they don't even have a running back on the field. Uh, but a lot of times they'll, they'll leave them out there and throw the ball or they'll motion them back in and run the ball. Do you get a little extra fired up individually after what happened last year against that team? Well, I think, you know, the competitor in you, anytime uh, uh, you don't play or coach as well as you'd like to, uh, you'd like to have a second chance to, to redeem yourself. And, and uh, I think that's definitely a sentiment this week. But, uh, uh, you know, we got to go out and do it. You know, to, you know, being a competitor and wanting to do it's one thing. You know, you got to go out and execute during the week uh, so that you can execute on Saturday. Is Terrence Frederick an underrated guy in this league for what, he, you know, what he's done for you guys? Um, I don't know if he's underrated. I, I like him. I, I mean, I think, I, I think a lot of Ter Terrence, uh, I think he's one of the, the better corners in our league. So, you know, I don't know what the outside people think about him. Uh, he's one of our best football players. Uh, he's he's got to work a little bit on, on being more disciplined, more consistent. Uh, but, you know, we do a lot of different things with him, from playing corner to playing nickel. and. We'll, we'll blitz him, and uh, he's done a nice job in man coverage. And uh, like I said, I think he's one of our best defensive players. Coach Sherman said that he has a 10-yard restraining order on Spencer Neely uh, because they're saliva flying everywhere and stuff like that. <laughs> Do you as well? And could you just talk about Spencer's enthusiasm? Uh, well, I'll tell you, I, I think uh, part of the reason we've played better the last few weeks is because Spencer's played more. Uh, not to speak ill of, of Jonathan Mathis because Jonathan was, was an excellent player for us, but uh, Spencer, for what he lacks athletically relative to Jonathan Mathis, uh, really brings a lot to the table as far as energy and enthusiasm and, and really does a nice job of lifting the, the other guys around him. Uh, in, in that vein, he's a, a little out of control at times, and so, yeah, you, you want to be at a distance sometimes, at least at arm's length, uh, uh, for all that stuff going on with him. He's a little bit like Chris Farley at times. Uh, uh, you know, fat guy in a little coat syndrome. But he's a he's a uh, fun guy to be around, and, and like I said, I think he's infectious to our defense. Coach, can you talk about Donnie Bags? He's the guy we we saw you know running ones with Jonathan Stewart for mostly you know the fall. Um, you know, he got a little bit of action out there on Saturday. What do you think about his performance? Well, I, th I think for uh, a guy who got a, a pretty significant bit of uh, action, or the first time he's got that kind of action, I was pleased. Uh, He's still kind of finding his way. He's not totally comfortable, but uh, uh, he's starting to get more uh, into the flow of things that we expected from him this year. Uh, you know, last spring we expected a lot of things from him. You know, uh, realizing he's still just a true freshman right now, we, we may have had higher expectations of him than he did for himself. So I think when he got into camp, uh, he kind of caught up with him a little bit. He wasn't quite ready at the beginning of the year, but he's worked hard and. Uh, uh, he's got a little ways to go, but you know he did some things on Saturday that, that made us, you know, kind of reassure us that that yeah he is a guy that can play for us, and he just he's got to keep, continue to work to get better. The so, a little bit banged up. Is that what we need to see? Well, uh, he has been, but now it's you know with Stephen Campbell back, Stephen's been our starter. Uh, it's, it's more of a function of Stephen Campbell being healthy uh, than than Howard being being banged up. And along those lines, Coach, how much stress does this Missouri offense in particular put on those inside linebackers? A ton, because they're going to have to be, you know, guys who walk out of the box to cover down over removed receivers, and then when they return guys back in, they've still got to be able to fit the run and read their keys. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm impressed with their with their scheme. Dave Yost does a great job uh, in putting stress on a defense. 
and uh, our guys are going to have to work their tails off to understand what they're doing out of certain formations and, and different splits with things and where their eyes need to be. And that's the biggest thing that's been hurting our guys is having their, their eyes in the wrong places. For young guys like Donnie, he's got to work on, on knowing exactly where my eyes need to be to, to read my keys. Has so. Jonathan Stewart kind of brought a semblance of stability to that, uh, to that inside linebacker court? Because there's been an awful lot of turnover. Uh, Jonathan's probably uh, played the best out of all the inside guys. Uh, you know, he, I think he, he'd tell you he didn't play his best game the other night, uh, the other afternoon. But uh, uh, I've been pleasantly, you know, pleased with, with how he's played. I still would like to have him play a little faster pace, a little bit more fanatical. He, he, he tends to be a little cautious uh, where we want him to turn it loose a little bit more. But uh, like, like I've mentioned before, he's a very heady football player. Uh, he gets our guys lined up. Uh, he can play multiple positions, and so when you put a young guy out there with him, you feel much better having a, a quasi-coach on the field next to that guy. So uh, I've really been pleased with those kind of things. We just got to get him to be a little bit more productive and a little bit more fanatical. Is he a guy you wish you had two years of going into the SEC? I'm sorry? Is he a guy you wish you had two years of going into the SEC? Uh, two years of playing inside? You know, two Stu's years. coming back now. Yeah, but you wish you had two years oh, of going oh. the SEC. Uh, yeah, I guess so. You know, I, I all I worry about is this week, though. To be honest with you, you know, we'll worry about all those things when, when it comes. But I want guys that uh, all they care about is Missouri and, and how can we slow those guys down? Because because this is a heck of a challenge this week. What could you talk about playing an SEC opponent in Missouri? <laughs> I, I, I like how you did that. I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah. That, that hasn't happened yet, has it? Uh, it might be today. Might be. Yeah. Well, regardless, we're playing Missouri, whatever league they are in. I think they're still in the Big 12 like we are, so uh, we look forward to the challenge, and it's going to be a heck of a challenge. Do you expect uh, fumble recoveries to come in bushels the rest of the way? Have you ever seen a stat like that? No, no I haven't because uh, we've knocked balls loose, uh, and they've been on the ground, it seems like, for ages, uh, and we just can't seem to, to get on it. And, and uh, you know, we talk about the four Ps of it and, you know, having purpose and in, 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 in having preparedness and having that population. We haven't had that population where that ball's been, and we got to do a better job with that. Um, you know, physically, we've been, you know, attacking the football better and getting the ball out. We just, we got to get more population there that when it is out, that, that we make the play on the ball. Do you feel like the one-on-one -on -one tackling in space has been an issue this season, and, and kind of how you feel about it going into a team that is so good at getting one-on-one -on -one matchups in space like Missouri? Well, I think any time uh, you play spread teams, that's their theory. Is, is get one-on-one -on -one matchups in space. You know, it's almost like clear-out basketball. You know, you, they, and they'll do this a bunch. They'll put four guys over on one side and one one guy on the other side, and just figure, you know, see how you want to match it up. Do you want to double that guy, or do you want to go single? And if we got a lot of space, if he can make a guy miss, you got a chance for a big play. And, you know, you look at the the entire league; that it's that way. They're spreading people out and creating one-on-ones. And if you make tackles and you force takeaways, you got a chance to win the football game. If you don't, they got a chance to move the ball down the field, and so ultimately, it, that's what it comes down to. You've got to win the one-on-one -on -one battles because they're going to complete the passes. They're going to they're going to get yards. You got to knock balls loose, and you know the games that that uh, Missouri's won, they've taken care of the ball and they've done a good job in those, those areas. You know, if you can get some takeaways, that's how you got to stop that kind of a team. And how confident are you in your guys in those one-on-one -on -one matchups, especially tackling in the open field, based on how you've been this season? Well, you know, uh, of course you'd like to be better, uh, but, but I feel comfortable that, that our guys, uh, technique-wise, are, are, are getting better each week, that, that, that we're playing with pretty good pad level. It's something we, we, we continually stress. Uh, and, you know, we get a chance to practice against pretty good athletes in space at practice. So although we're not getting those guys to the ground, uh, you know, and you don't know until Saturday whether you can get a guy live to the ground. Uh, just the fact that we have to practice and, and fit up on those guys gives a pretty good indication and, and gets our guys used to playing against that kind of talent. With the balance that Missouri shows, at least numbers-wise, do they compare to anybody you've seen? Uh, maybe a little bit uh, like Baylor. Uh, passing game's a little bit different, but, but Baylor was committed to running the football. You know, they were running for about the same number of yards, I believe, coming into the game and, uh, you know, and throwing for uh, you know, a ton of yards as well. Uh, it's probably the closest, you know, the, the team that's committed to doing both. You know, where other teams, they may want to run it for 150 yards a game and throw it for 350. These guys are closer to 50-50 on yardage.
Coach, going back to Jonathan Stewart, in the past years, he, you know, he's had a chance to start. This year, he's taken that start and mm -hmm. run with it. Can you see the difference and tell us what the difference is? Well, I, I think it started in January with Jonathan. Um, you know, when I got here a year ago, uh, he had played some as a freshman, uh, kind of got forced into a role a little earlier than uh, maybe what he anticipated or was ready for. Uh, really wasn't sure what it took to compete and, and, and work uh, going a, a year ago. And so he was a backup that was learning. Um, after the bowl game, you know, he was he kind of committed himself to, to working harder and uh, try to be a better leader. Uh, and so he had a really good spring last year. and. You know he's he's progressed through camp and uh, uh, he, he's making strides. You know we, we'd like him to get a little bit more fanatical, a little bit more less cautious, a little bit more uh, forceful in, in when he makes decisions to do things. But uh, he's 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 showing pretty good progress. Do you like the fact that he's inside now? I mean, do you think that's where he'll stay? Uh, well, for right now, he's he's probably playing the best of an inside linebacker. So yeah, we anticipate him staying there. Uh, Coach, you guys did a pretty good job of shutting down Iowa State overall, but one guy that had a, a pretty decent run was uh, their slot receiver, Lens, and that's been kind of the, probably the biggest bugaboo for you guys all season. Um, with Missouri and TJ Mo coming in, how do you address taking care of the slot guy? Well, I, uh, it's not so much the slot, the person, to be honest with you. It's, it's where they fit in our coverage, and, and we've had some breakdowns inside in our coverage. Uh, off of play action, we're not doing a good enough job of, of getting linebackers up underneath coverage, and we're, we're too deep in our, in our, in our safety, and so there's, there's some holes in there. Um, TJ Mo, you know, I think I, I look at him, I think he's a lot like Ryan Swope. He's an explosive player, uh, he's, he's a big time playmaker for them. Uh, real shifty guy, and, and does a lot of good things when, when after the catch. Uh, you know you, what you got to do is is make sure people realize where he's at because he's he's a go-to guy for them. Uh, but you know with these guys they've got a ton of weapons. You know Franklin does a great job carrying the ball. You know uh, the running back uh, Josie does. And, you know you got Agnew, so you can't just double him all the time. Uh, and that's that's the problem with this kind of offense. You think you can get them in a predictable down distance situations, and they're they're not very predictable. They get in the third long and they'll run the ball a pretty good bit. So. Uh, and, and, and make third downs, you know, running some of their options type stuff. So uh, it's it's a it's an offense that makes you work at it, and, and uh, you know you just got to try to limit the big plays and realize that they will make some. That's tough.